Using a shot timer is pretty simple. You hit the green button on the front of it, it's going to beep, and when it does, you perform a shooting drill. And the way a shot timer works is it's going to track every single gunshot, and it's going to give you data, much like a stopwatch would, that's going to allow you to track performance. There's a lot of people that buy shot timers simply because they saw it on Instagram or saw one of their favorite shooters running them, but haven't really invested the time in figuring out how we can use these to become better shooters. And guys, this is a super powerful tool that's going to allow you to train to higher standards, track your performance, and track your growth as a shooter. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today, how to use one of these shot timers. One of the first ways that I'm gonna use a shot timer is what I would call baseline performance. And this is the simplest way that I would say that you could use a shot timer. And what that means is you simply hit the button and the beep's gonna go off and you perform a drill. So what I'm gonna do for you guys first is just one round drills. I'm gonna draw from concealment, put one round on target. I've got USPSA targets down here at five yards. And then we're just gonna talk about it. And we're only going to do this a couple times. So I'm, I usually hang the shot timer on my pocket. It's just very accessible. That way it doesn't get in the way of anything that I have on my body. So again, we're just going to look for the time to perform this task. So let's do it. All right, I threw that high left. That's in a Charlie. That's a 1.39. So what's going to happen with the shot timer, at least this model, as soon as you perform the drill, every single shot, it's going to add data. Because it's only one shot, there's one time up here, that 1.39 is my only time. So again, that's a baseline performance. So for a, a task like drawing from concealment, maybe I'll run this drill three or four more times and just try to figure out how can I perform this drill better or what is my standard time for this particular drill. So let's do that two or three more times. And I'm just gonna read off the times then. So that was a 1.19, and that is an A zone dead center. One point three five. I fumbled that grip a little bit. We're in cooler weather. I've got multiple layers on, so I felt that grip a little bit sloppy. One more. That was a 1.16. So now what I would do is take data like that, put it in my notebook and keep track. Okay, for one round from concealment, this is the time that I should expect myself to be running it at cold. And then I can also set goals of how to further increase that time. And it's a super basic thing to do. Now let's do three rounds on target here. We're just gonna look at the overall time of that. All right, all A zone, that was a 1.78. So as you guys can see there, overall time, 1.78. Let's see if I can do that a little bit faster on this run. That was a 1.68. Now the problem that I see on the internet is a lot of people really never get past this particular point. They'll stop at these baseline times, but I can tell you that this shot timer is capable of so much more. It can break down your drills in so many different ways and that's what we're gonna dive into next. All right, that was the Charlie that I threw at the very beginning. The rest of those shots for that particular drill are all in the A zone. And to be honest, guys, an A zone at five yards isn't that small of a target. It's a pretty big target. Fairly easy to hit and make your shots. One thing I do want to say, something that I was always taught, is if you start seeing yourself shooting really tight groups, oftentimes what that means is you're shooting really slow. And that's not a bad thing. It's awesome to be able to hit accuracy. But at some point, we want to hit that gas pedal and figure out what we can do performance-wise and that ties in directly with our whole topic here of learning how to use a shot timer. But for that first segment of this video, all I talked about was baseline performance. And it's something that I see a lot of shooters getting stuck on. What was my overall time for a drill? Rather than breaking down the internal components of that drill. So we're gonna come back here to five yards and instead of just saying, okay, it took me 1.68, 
I'm gonna show you a feature that every good shot timer should already have and allow you to see. So we are going to draw and fire three rounds, just like we did at the end of that first segment. And I'm gonna show you some extra data that you can dive into. 1.68 was my best time, I think. All right, 1.70. So now check out that screen there. On that screen, what you'll notice is I can actually pan through different information. So I'm gonna read this so I can see it. So 1.70 was my overall time. 1.25 was my first shot. 0.22 was my second shot. So between the first shot and second was 0.22 seconds and then 0.23 seconds. So I know that I can beat a 1.25 time right out of the holster. So I know that I have some wasted time there. And I also know that I've gotten splits as fast as like 0.17 and 0.18, but the splits are consistent. So that's data that I know if I want to pick up speed on this time and I have 100% accuracy, I can see they're all A zone. What I could do is work on that initial draw. And that kind of goes back to the baseline fundamentals for us. Let me try a bill drill, which is six rounds on target, and then we're gonna dissect the data. And that's enough rounds that I'll be able to actually see how consistent my cadence is. All right, so not quite a bill drill. Had a reload pop up in there. But the overall time was 4.35. My first shot was a 1.31, again, a little bit slow. If I'm just wearing a t-shirt, I can normally get right around that one second mark. No doubt if I spend a lot of time here warming up, I probably could get around that even with a sweatshirt. Second shot was a 0.26. Then the third shot happened in 2.17 seconds after that second shot, which means it took me 2.17 seconds to perform a reload. That's good information that you can write down in a notebook. It's going to help you out. Next shot was 0.22, and then I had a 0.18 split and a 0.21 split. So the cadence isn't necessarily the best, and I wanna come back to that build drill, but what we're gonna do now is something that I just wanna show you you can also do with a shot timer. So we can actually start and isolate a component of a drill. So let's say that reload was pretty sloppy and I wasn't really happy with it. I noticed that as the gun came up into my face, I wasn't very efficient with the magazine coming back into the gun. So what we could actually do is isolate a component of a drill with a shot timer. So what that means is I already have the gun out here on target, and we're gonna see what my times look like doing a reload from this position. That was a 1.90. Now that's not a perfect representation because we're eliminating the recoil from that initial round that would have caused the slide to lock back, but let's do it one more time. That was a 1.78. So remember that first reload was a 2.17 and then now we're down to a 1.78. And again, it's not gospel because when you're doing a string of fire and an organic reload occurs, there's a lot of other forces going into it. We're not just standing here with a slide locked back saying, okay, cool, got a reload here. So it's not perfect. But what this allows me to do is take a shot timer and say, this thing took me approximately this long. And I can then dissect it, isolate it, and then figure out where can I pick up time because speed does matter. If we wanna progress as shooters, we should be trying to shoot extremely accurately, extremely fast. And that's something that's very important. So now what we're gonna try to do, hopefully I have enough ammo. The last drill that I wanna run here for cadence is a true bill drill. Again, that's six rounds. Hopefully I have six. All right, that was super sloppy out of the draw. I have two Charlies, the rest are alphas. That was a 2.63 overall time. So you guys can see that. First draw, 1.61, that is horrendous. That is so bad, that is so bad. I wanna get another mag, hang on, we're doing this again.
All right, we're gonna get a good demo here because that was absolute trash. Let's do this for real. All right, 2.46. First round was a Charlie again. Guys, I'm throwing some rounds into Charlies today. 1.34 initial, that's my first round impact. Split was 0 0.26, 0 0.22, 0 0.21, 0 0.22, 0 0.21. So again, consistency. Having this shot timer is going to allow me to dissect between every single one of those shots. That's what split means. How much time did it take between all of those shots? And you should have a high level of consistency. And then obviously from the data I'm getting with this, I should write that down in a notebook. And then I'll know that I need to work on my draws, that initial shot from concealment onto target. And guys, that's two ways that you can use a shot timer. We're gonna dive even deeper here in the next segment of this video. The last thing I wanted to talk to you guys about was setting up different par times. And a par time on a shot timer, everyone should be able to do this if it's a quality timer, is setting a second beep. So instead of just beeping one time, I've set this timer up to beep at 1.15 seconds. You might be asking, why would I do that? Well, we saw in the last couple drills that my draws were pretty sloppy and I wasn't really happy with them. So what I can do with this part time is train my brain to understand what that time frame looks like. And I can't guarantee that I'm going to hit a 1.15 part time but at least I'm going to be seeing exactly when I would need to break the shot in order to get that time on paper. And I'm gonna try to get it. So you guys will see, instead of just one beep, it's going to be two. I'm gonna draw, fire one round, focusing on that initial round impact on paper. Let's do this. That was a 1.18. I'm only 0 0.03 seconds away from that part time and I have an alpha hit. Let's see if I can get that 1.15. I'm really gonna hit the gas on this. That was a 1.05, but I threw it into a Charlie. I'm gonna try again. Now I gotta back it down a little bit, get that good dot picture on the target, break the shot, but still beat that 1.15. Then we're gonna go down range and talk about it. Threw that one high, 1.08. Let me do one more. One point one three. So I met that standard. So you can see how using a shot timer with that part time is giving me that mental notification. Okay, this is how fast you would have to go in order to get the time that you want. And as I progress as a shooter and I start picking up speed, I can actually set those part times to whatever I want. If I'm blazing it down at 1.05 and I wanna see if I can get a 0.95 initial shot, I can set that part time to achieve that. So that was the first one. Second one was a Charlie. I saw red flash onto the target, but I wasn't quite centered. This one I completely threw high. And then the last one here that I nailed at a 1.13 that landed in the alpha. So again, it's not bad to miss. It's not bad to push yourself to the point where you are seeing that your rounds are falling apart because what it did is it showed me, okay, I can achieve this level of performance, a 1.18 or whatever it was, and get my alpha. I know that now, I know that I can do that, and obviously I can do that fairly consistently. When I try to push it even faster, with my current skill level and my current practice, I start falling apart. So I know where to back it back to, to get back to my standard. And guys, this also brings up an awesome video that we did with my buddy, Paul. It was in our budgeting ammo series where we talked about tracking our performance because at the end of the day, the shot timer is just a tool and it's only going to give you information out. And that information can be bad if you're not using the tool properly. So now that we're at the end of this video, I hope it encourages you to get out, train with a shot timer. I hope this gave you a couple different ways to use a shot timer. Check out that other budgeting ammo video because Paul and I really talked a lot 
about taking the information that we're seeing here, this info that I just got on the range, and then applying it into a range training plan so that you can track your performance better and then perform better on the range. And guys, shameless plug, we do keep these in stock, tatargets.com. If you need a shot timer, if this video helped you, if you found it helpful at all, one of the ways you can pay it forward is either subscribe to the channel, like, leave us a comment, let us know what you think. And if it's in the market, it's in your budget, and you need a shot timer, purchase it off of our website. We appreciate the support. Catch you in the next one.